Hey everybody, Ramey here, and today we're going to talk about a really fun topic, Adobe Captivate, the virtual reality features that it has. I'm going to show you how to use it, give you a review, and talk about my tests, you know, when I got to test it in some virtual reality headsets, um, to kind of show you, you know, what what is this stuff like, what can it do, is it good, should I be using it now, is it ready for prime time, that kind of stuff. All right, so first of all, um, I'm using Adobe Captivate 2019. This is the third version of 2000, the third version of 19. Um, so obviously, as you know, when you're looking at any software, you know, if you're looking at this video in two years from now, expect the software to be pretty, pretty probably different. Um, so I just wanted to explain where I was in the software. Okay, Adobe Captivate Virtual Reality. All right, so as you know, I love virtual reality. I love gaming. I love playing with it. Um, I think VR is awesome. So I'm always really excited to test this feature out and use it because there's so, so much potential with training in VR, right? That we can do and making it so easy and captivate. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let's work on how to do it. Let's, let me show you how to do it. Let me talk to you about, and I'm also going to tell you some of the things that I discovered that maybe aren't working so well too. So some of it works really well and some of it doesn't. So let's talk about that. Okay, so the first thing you do is you open up Adobe Captivate. You can see it, I have it up on the screen here. All right, so what they allow you to do is add a 360 image or video. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, how do I do that? You need a 360 camera. You can buy them on Amazon for anywhere from $100, and there are really expensive ones that are thousands of dollars, like a realtor would want to use or a professional. Um, but you need a 360 camera. You can do it with your cell phone or a regular camera. You can kind of make 360 images, but it really the quality is really not good. I highly suggest you have a 360 camera because you can buy one for pretty cheap. Um, okay, having said that, Let's assume you've got a 360 camera, you've taken some good pictures or a video and you're ready to do something with VR. So all you do is you click here and you're gonna add a video. Now, Captivate, if you click this Assets tab, already has a few like examples that you can play with. So we're gonna play with some of them today, just so I can show you how to use it. Um, and you know, it's just nice that they have some for people that don't have 360 cameras. I do have a 360 camera. Um, but I'm still just gonna do this because it's much easier. All right, so I've downloaded one of their assets here. I have one image on the screen here, and it is they they already started out with just a, a piece of text. You can see if I scroll around the screen, already it's a 360 view, right? I can look at my feet. Well, not in VR. You don't really have feet, do you? But I can go all around the room, even look at the ceiling. So, you know, when I talked about realtors needing a really professional 360 camera, imagine how useful this is to someone who's like looking at a house from a thousand miles away. They can actually be in the whole house and like check it out. It's pretty cool. Really cool stuff. All right. So to use VR and Captivate, super simple. It, it's really easy because it, it doesn't do too much yet which is a good thing because some of the stuff doesn't work. So they need to take their time and make sure things are working. And, you know, okay, so first of all, I can scroll, I add my 360 image and right away I can scroll around the screen. You can see in my properties, you can see the image right here. This is the title of my image. If I want to delete it, I click this little button and then I can um, right back here where I can add it, add a new image. Okay, so that's how you get your image. Then. You can do all kinds of stuff with your image. So first of all, I can add text. And I've kind of already showed you a piece of text right here. That's simply adding text, text, right? We're pretty familiar with text. If you're working with Captivate and you're learning about VR, you know how to use text. But you can see I can do things to it like bold, italicize, underline, change the font style, you know, basic stuff, write what it says, you know, simple stuff. And I can move it around the screen. And notice in VR when you move it around, it's not like static. It, it's actually moving in a 360 environment. Okay, next thing they have are something called hotspots. You can see a couple of hotspots right here on the screen. I can click up at the top here there's a hotspot and I have different icons and you can do whatever you want in the icons but they made some like different ones that, like obviously if you see this your probably user is going to assume it's text this one would be images I mean audio this one would be images you know that kind of stuff so they've made it really nice but what you do so let's actually just pull one out on the screen here let's pick a 
that's what they call their hotspot. You can see right away it's selected. You can see the blue box around it. I can over in my properties, I can go to style and I can do some stuff. To, if I double click in it, you can see that I can like actually change the style of it. Like I can start to change the colors, make it look however I want to. Then I click it again. I can actually make it bigger, smaller, you know, so I can play around with the object, the hotspot and do whatever I want to it. Um, so that's in my style. Then I can go to my actions and I can actually pick what I want it to do. So when a user clicks on this hotspot, do I want it to, do I want text to pop up? Do I want audio to play? Do I want an image to pop up? Do I want to play a video? You know, they give you like, it, it can actually do some really cool stuff. So the hotspots are nice because it allows the user to interact with the environment. For example, in this example here, if the user clicks on the stairwell, it'll tell them something about the stairwell. If they click on the computer, I could have a video pop up or audio pop up. So you can do all kinds of nice little things. You know, I just click on this and I see actions. When you click on this one, it displays an image. Here's the image right here. You choose the image you want it to display. So very nice that they have all these. You can also have it go to the next or previous slide. I'm going to show you an, another example in a second that actually has a quiz built in and has multiple slides to show you what that looks like. But anyway, you can give these a number of app actions, which is really nice. And then there are some options like I can add audio, which will play on the slide and stuff like that. Okay, so those are hotspots. So really neat. They function well. They work well. Um, they're, you know, I, they have a nice options here there you can add your own image okay nice i can click media at the top here and i can add some stuff but really it's only allowing me to add audio if i want to add audio to the slide like for example when a user enters the slide do i want audio to be playing and stuff like that okay so the next thing i want to show you is how you can actually add quiz questions in virtual reality really cool feature um, so in you get back to your hotspots i'm just going to put a hotspot here on the screen and all that I'm going to do, I'll make it big because it's just easy to see on the screen. I'm going to click add questions. Once you click add questions, it's just like adding any other quiz question in, in Captivate. I can choose what I want it to be. I can choose, uh, you know, I want one multiple choice. I want it graded. I don't want a true false. Let's click OK. We're inserting a question slide. It allows me to pick what I want the response to be. It allows me to pick what I want the answer to be. Okay, so you can see there's various options, like I can have how many answers do I want, how many points do I want this to be worth, do I want there to be a penalty, correct, incorrect. So you can start to choose like what do you want to happen when the user is going to go through this quiz. Very easy to work with, very easy to use. Now notice, and it's kind of cool in my slide, if you look on the left hand side here, you can see how the quiz question interacts with my slide, it's like part of it, and then you can see slide four where the quiz results are. So they make it very easy to work with the quizzes in virtual reality, which is nice. Now what I want to do is I want to show you an example. So this is an example that Adobe gives you, which is kind of nice. So you could actually go in and play this and you can see this is Wii's apartment, someone's apartment. You can see all the different stuff you can do within the apartment. You can click on various things. So each one of these hotspots does something. You click on the door hotspot, opens up a quiz question. And you can basically test it out. This is a great piece of VR to test out how the VR works. So let's talk about testing and publishing um, because this is where I started to run into the issue. So going through and building VR is really simple. Honestly, Adobe, like super th like double thumbs up for that. Like this is super easy to work with. I'm so excited for this. The problem lies in the finished product. So first of all, the first thing that I noticed um, when I was uploading some of my own 360 photos, one of the reasons why I'm just using Adobe's is the quality wasn't, I really need to sit there and play with my published settings on my camera because the quality wasn't as good when I actually looked at it in virtual reality. So when I was publishing my personal 360 photos, and checking them out on my VR headset, the quality, they were pretty distorted. So I need to really play around with the publish settings to make sure they match what Adobe's recommending in Captivate. Okay, that was my error, you know, boo boo, first time playing with it. Not a big deal, but still something you need to consider when you're doing it. Okay, and obviously you would do some tests, but okay, got that out of the way. Next thing, let's talk about preview. So you go to preview and I'm gonna go to, uh, you know, project. 
which this, so what this is going to do, so there are three ways to play these things. Let me pull this on the screen while I'm talking about that. So there are three ways to play these. You can play them in the browser. You can play it on your phone, but if you play it on your phone, you need, you know, the Google Cardboard. You know, that's where you have a VR headset that you actually slide your phone into. I have a few of those laying around. Then the other option is to actually play it in a virtual reality headset. So how do you do that? So very simply, the if you're playing it in your browser, I can actually just test it right on my screen. If I'm playing it on my phone or the virtual reality headset, what I need to do is I need to upload the published version to a server. And then you go to a browser on your phone, you go to a browser in the VR headset, and you open it up in that, and it plays. And I was able to do this on phone, browser, headset, worked. Okay, so here is my example on my browser. This is was Wii's apartment. Let's play your it. Health and energy level during the day is also affected by your ergonomic efforts at home. This is Wii's apartment. Explore a bit to learn more about how she can keep up on ergonomic health at home. When you're finished, select the door icon to leave her apartment and continue with the course. Okay, so pretty cool. Right away, you get in, you have some sound. Okay, working. Um, I click the flower icon. I see that it pops up. You know, I'm, I'm using, I'm testing this in the browser. Like, this is a great way to really simply and quickly test your virtual reality. Okay, nice. Look at this. All three of these hotspots. Pretty cool. Bed. This is bedroom, where she spends a third of her life sleeping. Her mattress and your mattress contribute to your breathing and restorative sleep which impact your energy levels. A posturepedic mattress and ergonomic pillows can help to improve the quality of your sleep. So what they're doing is they're having us go in an order. You can see our first quiz question popped up. Nice, all working perfectly. So this is really nice. So you can see how fun this is. And then you click the exit, the door. You can see your quiz results, nice, right? Okay, so all working perfectly. So browser works great. Now let's talk about where I ran into some issues. So let's play this again. Let me show you where my issues were. Your health and energy level during the day is also affected by your ergonomic efforts at home. This is Wee's apartment. Explore a bit to learn more about how she can keep up on ergonomic health at home. When you're finished, select the door icon to leave her apartment and continue with the course. Okay, so let's talk about where the issues are. So first of all, when you're using your phone, the problem with phone cardboard VR is that there is no hand. So you can't actually select anything. So you can't select these when you've got this on your head. That's a problem. Problem one. So, okay, so you know what? Don't use this. Phone's out if you're going to have the users actually do anything other than look around. So with the phone, you can have the user look around everywhere. Works great for that. Can't have them interact. Next, we get to the VR headset. And this is where I ran into some disappointing problems. So the problems that I ran into were that, so in, this is Oculus Quest, um, and I actually have HTC Vive and Oculus Rift S and regular Oculus Rift. So what I ran into, I only tested it on the Quest um, because it's the latest version. Um, there are two ways to view VR in a VR headset. One is a flat panel browser and the other is immersing you into it. When I use the flat panel browser, which is basically just like a web browser, it works perfectly just like it worked in our example. The problem was when I immersed myself in the VR and like went in the room, none of these would work. I couldn't access any of these. I couldn't use any hotspots. Why would the hotspots not work? The hotspots don't work because there's no way to select them. The uh, hand controls that come with Oculus and HTC and all those things didn't actually work with Captivate. So you couldn't actually select anything. That was disappointing. Um, so, you know, I went on to Adobe's website and I was like, okay, well, what do they say like is this a known problem what's going on kind of let's find this out okay so what i found is that they only recommend two vr headsets google daydream and samsung gear vr 2017 okay so they're not using the latest headsets to test this with or they're not recommending them so this is an issue um because if you want to use the latest headset and i i 
you know, I've recommended the people, this is the headset to buy right now, Oculus Quest. It's not going to work with Captivate VR unless you're only viewing. Otherwise, you might as well use the web browser to do all the interactions. And at that point, why use VR unless there's a reason to like, you know, realtor, like you need to look around the room. So it, it works and doesn't work. Like there's so much potential here. I love it. Adobe, I want you to keep working on it. It's awesome. Making VR super simple. You've made it so easy. I love it. I'm very excited about that. Works on the browser. Great. So I think for browser use, awesome. Love it. Great job. On the phone, I don't like VR on the phone no matter what. So it, you can't interact with it. So no, I, I don't like that anyway. In the VR headset, it looks awesome. But again, you can't interact with it. And that's a problem because it's supposed to be virtual reality, supposed to work with the headset. So there's a big issue there. They need to work on that. I think the big problem is there are so many VR headsets and they're all coming out now that Captivate really has to work with like each one to get it to work right. I Now I tried two different browsers. I tried the default Oculus browser on my headset and I tried Firefox in the in the headset. I couldn't get the same issue with both one. I couldn't interact. Um, so minor problem, but it's super easy to publish. It does work well in a browser, so I did like that. So as I said, good, bad, you know, good and bad. Do I like it? Would I recommend it? I think if you're looking for like a browser-based VR, like the room, you know, the example that I had here, let me just pull this back up. I mean, this is awesome. Even just in the browser, like this is nice. Like if I need to look around a room and do something, really cool, even if just for a slide, like it is nice. And one other thing that I didn't show that I should have showed because in the, uh, just an option that I didn't show. So in Captivate VR, each slide, you know, when I have all these hotspots, what I can actually do, so like when the Wii's video started, it says explore these three hotspots. Then when I explored it, it said it automatically turned me to right here. So how do you do that? Whenever you click on a hotspot, you get to choose guided versus exploratory. Guided means it's going to guide you through a specific order. And exploratory means they can just do whatever they want. So once you view these three that are guided, if I open up my timeline at the bottom here, you can see one, two, three. Once I viewed those three, it's going to automatically take me to the bedroom. Once I view the bedroom, oops, there we go, takes me over to the kitchen. So you can choose the order when you pick guided, which is really nice. So because you could view those thir first three, once you were able to see the rest, it started to sw tell you what to do. So you can pick an order, which is also really nice if you have a reason to do that. So I like the features, very happy with it, except for it's not working in the headsets, which I'd say is a huge, huge deal breaker, but it's really not because I see the value in having this in a browser. So I don't think it's a deal breaker. I just think it's a bug and something they're gonna work on. And I bet even in a year from now, it'll start working on all these headsets. So that's it, thank you.